All right, so this is Kate Ivey, and today I'm going to be tearing down the Eaton Model 7 hydrostatic transmission, often used in walker mowers. So, first thing I must do in order to take this apart, gain access to the housing, is to remove two T40 Torx screws holding on the back housing. One thing to keep in mind is I've already been inside here and cleaned it out, so when you tear this down, it's going to be a lot messier. I advise you drain the oil first, and before you remove this housing, make a mark right from here to here so you know exactly how it goes. Because if you put this back together wrong, your mower is going to go backwards. Your wheel is going to go backwards of the direction that you need it to go. All right, here are your two bolts. All right, so the next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is take out both of these plugs. Preferably do this before assembly, but I'm just gonna show you them now. They're 11 sixteenths. Top plug and bottom plug, they're both the same. And then up here in the top is the dump valve. You're gonna to need to remove that with a 5 16 This would be a stick thing that screws into something on the inside. Looks like that. All right, another thing that's 11 16 is the part that holds on the dump valve assembly. So you just loosen this by turning it to the left. All right, now we're gonna pop this rear housing off. I'll tilt it up a little bit and pull this right out. All right, so inside here, there's gonna be what's called ball piston motor, and it has five of these balls drop out, hopefully, look like that. These will be different than the pump ones. The pump ones will be a little bit smaller, and this is ruined, as you can see, the um, inside of there in between each hole is very scarred up and damaged. So this has to be replaced. This was donated to me courtesy of Howard Brothers Riverside, Athens, Georgia. Very good company. Strongly recommend you buy machines from them. Next thing you do is remove a snap ring. Looks like this, the little C ring. And move and take out this shaft. My advice is not to beat directly on the shaft, you could damage it, so get something like a nut or a collar and just do a swift tap. Alright, and just like that, this will be free. Also holding on your bearing will be a C-clip, or a C-clip. This, this is your shaft, don't damage it. Alright, next thing to remove is called the pintle. This is what both your pump motor ride on, and when you pull out the pintle, your pump should stay inside of this housing. If if not, it's probably damaged. That's happened when I first took this apart, and um, and everything will kind of fall apart in here. So, yep, like that. So, this is the pintle, and that's the pump on it. it gets what just dropped. All right. This is what dropped. It's a little piece that does both your dump valves and how it goes together is you have these two springs which go on the dump valve rod like that and they go down those two holes just like that and this dump valve presses on two tiny little balls down at the end of those holes, oh, down the end of those bores. All right, next thing that comes out is the pump. This has five balls and these will be a little bit smaller. Let me see if I can get one of these out to show you. 
than the wheel motor balls. These, keep in mind, aren't spring-loaded, so they shouldn't fly apart. The wheel motors are. All right, next piece to pull out is this little thing that held the dump valve. And so, you pull that straight down, it should fall out freely. In this case, I had to unthread it, which I consider to be pretty odd. Alright, there it is. Now, one thing to observe on this is that there's heavy scoring right there and on the pump side as well right there. If your pump ever looks like this, just toss the whole thing out and replace it with a brand new one from Walker or whoever you got the machine from because this this assembly isn't worth rebuilding and I can't even find the parts for it. Okay, the next piece that comes out is the pencil race. It's what all little balls ride in. They ride in this groove right here. And this piece will fall out. It does, it's what, it's activated by your control arm and it just is a fit just like that. So pull that out, separate this. Ball pistons, they sit in here just like that, with the ball riding against the raceway. Okay. One other thing that will fall out is this little plug. It goes in right down there. And it's just a little bushing for your, um, right there, it's a little bushing for your plate to ride against. All right, now, one of the last things to do is take out the um, input C-clip, input shaft C-clip. This little C-clip looks like this. I'm not sure if this will come out. I haven't tried taking this out. And this reservoir, by the way, is left-hand thread, so I got it stuck a little bit. All right, after that, you remove another C-clip. Looks just like the other one. Let's see if I can find it. Another one of these. They're a pain in the rear to get off, but you have to. And one trick I recommend is putting this hammer sideways and then hitting it like this. It makes it so it doesn't deform your shaft down here and it doesn't damage the hammers. And when you get flush, get that same nut we used before, give it a few taps. And turn it sideways. Do the same thing. It's going to take a few hits to get this one out. It's fairly stuck. I'm going to see if I can wiggle that free. Alright, one sec. And this is what your input shaft will look like. It has spines for the pump look like this and they mate like this. There's no specific way they go apart. It's just they don't spin independently of each other. All right, last thing to come out is this front bearing. It just gets punched forward. Um, up here the damage the seal back there. It should come out fairly easily. I have a starter case I use to remove this. If you don't have one, I recommend you get one of these uh, Kawasaki or Kohler starter cases from the, um, you know, when they, if those engines will lose a starter and take those parts, it's useful. Let me do it with this input shaft. Yep, see it's coming.
keep in mind, I'm not, I'm not worried if I damage anything, because I'm not, because this thing is already destroyed. So, um, if you are careful, when you're hammering on things, hammer on things you don't need. See, look, there's that, and there's, you can see behind it, there's the front seal. There's also, I think, some kind of magnet over here. So if you're disassembling this to, to clean, like the oil after like 3,000 hours, clean it out really well, um, make sure you clean off that magnet and get all the stuff out of there. All right, so this is your front bearing. The back bearing will look the same, and the back bearing will also have the same seal behind it. So yeah, I hope this video was nice and informative and you learned something from it. And if you have any more questions about disassembling an Eaton Hydro, just uh, ask me in the comment section. And y'all have a good day.